and a, one of his contemporaries, George Whitfield, which again, George wasn't perfect. You know, I know all that. I got more true knowledge from reading the Book of God in one month than I could ever have acquired from all the writings of men. What's he talking about? He's talking about the King James Bible. The greatest curse that God can possibly send upon a people in this world is to give them over to blind, unregenerate, carnal, lukewarm, and unskilled guides like the majority of pastors today. As it was formerly, so it is now. There are many that corrupt the Word of God and deal deceitfully with it. He would have had no power at all being a street preacher as he was. He was one of the first men. He, he caught a lot of uh, flack from people because he started going from the church, the organized church buildings, and coming out here on the street. And he had all kinds of people. You know, This is not an, an inaccurate illustration of some of what he experienced. People threatening him, people shooting at him, people beating him up, and he continued preaching. Okay? Another great man of God. Here we have another great man, J. Frank Norris. And right here in the inside cover, I'm going to have to zoom out here a little bit. What is needed is a school that teaches the whole English. Bible. Oh, we need the Greek. We need to have the original Greek. Yeah, no you don't. You need the English Bible. What is needed is a school that will take men from the engine cab from between the plowshares and teach them the Bible. What is needed is a school that is free from modernism. What is needed is a school that will teach a man how to go out with the Bible under his arms, faith in his heart, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, begin in a vacant lot and build a church to the glory of God. The English Bible. And it was the King James Bible that J. Frank Norris used. He did not use the new versions. Okay, let me show you another quote here. He says here, And our positive stand for the faith in the whole Bible as our only rule of faith and practice. There you have it. He was a Bible believer. God just isn't going to use you if you don't believe in the book that you're reading. If the reader thinks the language is often too plain and blunt, let him remember that David did not go against Goliath with a bottle of perfume, nor did John the Baptist answer the Sadducees and Pharisees with a pearl-handled penknife. J. Frank Norris was abrasive in a lot of what he said. He had the town mad at him. They burned his church down at one point. That's just the way it's going to be. The church that studies the Bible only, here he's talking about, he says, because we believe that it was better to study the Word of God than to study merely what some man had written about the Word of God. Okay? Interesting stuff there. But let me show you one other thing. All right, here we have another thing, and guess what? Look at there. The people were talking about the, the news media and things, they were talking about the fruits of Norricism. <laughs> uh, you know, King James Illyism, Ruckmanism. It was out before Ruckman ever even showed up. And there's another place in here, I'm not going to turn to it for sake of time, but his followers, his, his students at his church were called Narasites. You know, Ruckmanites. Very interesting. Moving on. How about the life and sayings of Sam P. Jones? Another good book, highly recommended. Here you have a picture of Sam Jones' Bibles that he carried. Use nothing but a King James Bible. And here's a poem about the King James Bible. You can pause that and read it. I'm not going to read it for sake of time. But here he says, All right, uh, we'll go down to this one here. What's culture worth? inquires he in another connection. It's only whitewash on a rascal. Now look at this. I'd rather have to learn my ABCs in heaven than to know Greek in hell. <laughs> Amen. I agree with that. That's good stuff right there. There's going to be a lot of people that know Greek, the original Greek, you know, and they're going to be in hell for all of eternity. 
plenty of education, but uh, no salvation. You say, oh, then you're saying anybody that studies Greek is going to hell. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all, but you'd be better off learning the King James Bible, learning English. Uh, take the time to study the archaic English, you know, rather than the archaic. You talk about archaic. Look at the Greek. Anyhow, it says here, he took the Bible as his authority. He preached it just as he found it. He had no patience with higher criticism. No evangelist has any business with such a Bible. Without the utmost faith in the simple word of God, he might preach earnestly and eloquently, but could not produce conviction. He took the book just as he found it. A higher critic said to him once, Mr. Jones, you don't believe the Bible just as it is, do you? His reply was, you fool you, of course I do. How could I believe it as it ain't? <laughs> That's good stuff there. Another place, I don't, I don't have it marked here again, I'm not going to turn to it, but another place, some guy asked him about, uh, they said, Mr. Jones, do you believe that uh, Jonah was swallowed by a whale? And Sam Jones said to him, he said, if the Bible said that Jonah swallowed the whale, I'd believe it. See, that's what a Bible believer is. I have made the word of God the limit and boundary line of truth. I have considered myself free to think within that boundary line. I have never been hampered by rule or schools. God's word has been the circle and God himself the orbit around which my mind has moved. I have been called a crank, montebank, clown, fanatic, and fool. And that's what you get if you're a Bible believer. And I have gathered all these titles up and am willing to wear them with honors and cast them down at my Savior's feet at last, emblems of my loyalty to him and my fidelity to my convictions. Amen. Another wonderful man of God right there, Sam Jones. And he had a lot more guts than a lot of the Baptist preachers out there today. So again, don't give me that whole thing. Uh, I have my differences with the Methodists. But anyhow, The Life of D.L. Moody by his son. And this is a very old book, over a hundred years old. All right, here it says, there were two early influences that directly affected his life more than any others. And then it talks about his association with the Young Men's Christian Association there, the YMCA. And, uh, but a stronger and greater influence was his beginning in the study of the English Bible. You say, oh, well, maybe that was the revised version. Uh, no. He devoted himself to an intense study of it, and from it got two things. In the first place, he gained that clear-cut, plain, simple Anglo-Saxon of the King James Version that gave him such an immense power over people everywhere. So there you see seven men. You have D.L. Moody, Sam Jones, J. Frank Norris, George Whitfield. John Wesley, Billy Sunday, and John William Bergen, Dean Bergen, all being having their belief in the King James Bible as God's perfect word. All of them believing that they were holding God's word in their hands and they were able to accomplish amazing, mighty things for the Lord because they were Bible believers. And all of those guys existing before this book ever hit the shelves. And before this man right here, most of these guys were around before he was even born. Okay, so don't fall for the lie that King James onlyism is only a recent cult that was started by Ruckman. That is a lie, a total lie. Okay, believe the book. All right, you will produce tremendous spiritual fruit, maybe not on the level of these guys, the world has changed, since then, uh, you know, things are different now. But God will produce spiritual fruit in your life if you are a King James Bible believer. Believe what you read. Look up the scripture that I'm giving you right here at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for watching.